All right, this is a quick demonstration of how to use watercolor pencils. The brand I'm using today is Crayola watercolor pencil, and usually you can tell the difference between this and a normal colored pencil is they have the little paintbrush image on the side of them. Okay. One of the projects we work on is, is creating a dragon's eye up close, and some of this you'll need to do the eye, and we have some scales. So I've got a couple different ideas for how scales could be done. Here's an eye that I'm going to use for the demonstration. Okay, um, let's see, so if you want an eye, we'll say this one's going to have red in it. Okay, wherever you add color, wherever you want it the darkest, that's where you should put it on the thickest. Or the heaviest you know so give yourself the boldest color so if you want it the darkest around those edges then go ahead and put it on really thick there um, I'm gonna put some right around the pupil now you notice I didn't color the pupil in yet if you want to use a regular color pencil so that that doesn't blend at all you can do that I'm coloring around the eye the pupil right now, but what I'm doing is I'm leaving a small amount of white space there because I want that to pop out a little more to have a higher contrast. Okay, the other thing I'm going to do, because this is kind of cool, when I make these lines coming out from here, usually the pencil lines stay, so we'll see. And you can make them radiate out more. I'm just kind of doing them straight out for this example, but you could have them radiating it radiating out more like a star shape if you wanted to. Okay. Um, a little bit of color along the edge. Not a lot. Because that eyelid area would actually have some shadow going on. But again, you could use a regular color pencil here. That way the water wouldn't blend with it. I suppose you could also use your pencil. However, that might give you a more of a gray tone and not give you that dark, bold, black color that we're looking for. Alright, so I'm going to take a brush and just demonstrate how the watercolor pencil works. So I'm putting some, just some plain water on my brush. I have a paper towel nearby just to make sure you don't get too much water on it. And I'm just going to carefully touch along those edges and notice how it's pulling that color out. And I'm going to come along right up to that line that I made around the pupil. Okay. I'll do this side. If you're not getting any reaction, then you might need to get some more water on your brush. I'm trying to keep that white line near the pupil. If I lose it, it's not the end of the world. We'll just go to plan B. All right, so here I'm grabbing a hold of that color and pulling it out. See, that gives me those nice, dark edges where the shadows would be in the eye and it also gives me that lighter color in the middle but look my lines are still showing so that's kind of cool and I would let that dry before I do any work near it because I don't want those colors to mix when it's wet so let that dry first while that's drying I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna work on some of the scales I think I'm gonna use a couple types of green and yellow. So I've got a dark green, a light green, and a yellow here. And you might decide that you want to just do the edges. So if this were the edge, I might go through and make some lines like this. So dark all the way across. My darkest green. The bottom edge of the scales are all really dark. Okay, and then I might put some here, working down into that area, because this is the next layer. Maybe not going too far up. Okay, so put the green in there. Just a little. Next, I will take my light green and go in here. And you have to decide if you want these lines in here or not. I'm just kind of doing this as a quick demonstration. So obviously, 
you could be more careful or more free with your pencil strokes, just depending on the style you're using. Okay. There's not as much contrast between the two greens as I thought there would be. But I know I'll get a little more contrast when I use or difference in value when I use the yellow. So, But I'm building up some different colors so I don't have it all one shade of green. And I may not even color all the way up to the tip of the scale because I know my watercolor will pull, or the water, will pull the color out. Okay, so this could work for feathers too. It all depends on how you're going to create All right, so there, I've got my layers of color on this example for scales, and I'm just gonna take my brush, and I know these colors will blend okay. If you're using complementary colors, you're gonna end up with some, you'll get some brown. But you can let these blend together, and the water actually brings the color out a little more, it appears. I'm just smoothing that out, trying to stay within my lines, my pencil lines. That's another thing you can do if you want to outline your pencil area. You can do that later with a regular colored pencil. Anything that you don't want water to affect. You can even use the watercolor pencil at the end if you wanted to, but then if you have to fix anything and you've done it in black, it's going to turn everything gray near it. All right, so there's one example of how your scales might go together and how you can vary the color. Um, let's see. We've got some orange. Maybe we'll do one in orange and yellow. So maybe you've got a dragon over here and this is the type of scale you put on it, kind of pointy looking. And I could do the same type of style, the orange, and then put some yellow. You could even alternate, I suppose, and have in one and not in the other. Okay, there's the bottom of that one. So putting in that extra color in each layer, and I go back and add some yellow. It reminds me of candy corns. That fall candy. Oh, my colored pencils. The lead's trying to fall out, but I saved it, flipped it around. Okay. So I've added that, and then I could go in here and catch this section right here. This one's a little trickier design, but I think it will look cool. Kind of a flamey effect. Alright, let's see. Filling in all those in-between spaces in the pattern. Okay, so then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to hit it with some yellow each spot. Okay. Now, it looks good that way, but again, we are using watercolor pencils, so you want to kind of smooth out that color. And you can do each one individually, but since these colors I know are going to blend okay, I'm just going to pull the water across all of it at once and begin to smooth that color, blend it out. Okay. And this paper is a little bit absorbent, so it's looking a little gray at the moment, but once that dries, it'll be okay. All right, so there's a couple of examples of how you might do scales or part of the dragon's body in that way. So now I've got this red eye going on here, so maybe I'll make the dragon blue. So I've got sky blue and I've got regular blue. So you can use either one. I think I'll use a light blue on the inside of the scales, so I'll color all of those in like that. And I think I might outline it in dark blue. So again, you have to be very careful where you want your color to go. So when you are using your brush, it's important not to smash it down on your paper or anything like that, but actually let the end of the brush do the work. sure it's not dripping wet because then that water is going to run in places you don't want it to go. All 
Alright, so here's this eyelid of the dragon, and it's going to have these blue little scale look on it. So we're filling in each one. And if I want to, I can outline all of these in this darker blue. Let's see if I can trace over that whole thing. If you're feeling really brave, you could actually draw these details in with your colored pencil. But that all depends on your confidence level. So typically, I will sketch things out and then add my color, but not always. Sometimes you just dive right in and go for it. And if something goes a little bit awry, you just deal with it and keep going. Don't let it ruin your day. Alright, so here I'm going across this bottom eyelid, darken that up. I'm going to go across the top eyelid and darken it. I'm making that line just a little thicker because that'll create that shadow and kind of push the eyeball back into its little socket where it belongs and make the eyelid pop forward a little bit. It creates that illusion. Okay, and we can even pull some of that color out with water in a minute. Let me finish going around all these scales. Filling in that space. So if you're a person that really likes your colored pencils, this is just one other option you have because it can blend your colors a little more smoothly. And still have the control of a colored pencil. All right, so I can go in here and I can, since I know this color is all the same, I'm just going to take some water and carefully, as I'm only using the tip of the brush, touching that water in there, smoothing it in so all those little white spaces that I couldn't quite get with my colored pencil are now filling in with color. And I'm not worried that the darker blue is blending a little bit with the lighter blue. I kind of like that look. Okay. So now I've done that, I'm actually going to take some of the blue here and I'm going to pull it out just a little bit. Try not to go too far, but I want to get a shadow on the white part of the eye here, just to make it appear to have some more depth. And I may come back after this dries and darken that line again. And actually right now, because when you add the water it seems to make the color a little bolder. So I'm very carefully touching the tip of my brush and along that dark, thick line that I made on the eyelid. And it's actually making it look a little bolder. Okay, so there's some options you can do. And if you feel that you're done at this point, let that dry. I'm going to take my black watercolor pencil, fill in the eye. You might even leave a part of it like that so it looks like a little sparkle there of light reflection. You can leave it as it is, or I know this area is pretty well dry, I can take it and notice how much deeper that black just became when I touched the water very carefully. Again, I touch the water to that. So, blends it together, makes the darker tone, and now you have a quick example of a dragon's eye and a possible way that you might do scales. So hopefully this helps you as you go about your art.